look at what we have here. And look at what we have here. And look at what we have here. A big, big pain in my ass. Oh yes, Buster is back at home. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's been a long, however many weeks it's been. Sadly, it's not over yet. What do I mean by that? Well, if we take a look under here, Hey, look, not much has changed. So as you can see, this is the same engine that is still inoperable and it has not moved. So what has happened? Well, Ford has finally doubled down on the fact that these parts on the car, uh, such as this part, this part, uh, this part, that part, uh, the intercooler, whatever else they could think of. Hell, even the catch can, why not? Boost Max, sure. Uh, these plastic pieces, why not? They're not original to the car. Aftermarket parts made this engine go You know, they started with the parts. Then they went and said, hey, this is the fuel. We're blaming the fuel for the cause of the problem. And then they doubled down and went back to the parts because they knew that the fuel excuse was way too much bull crap. I don't even know why they even mentioned it, but they are completely refusing uh, to replace the engine under warranty. So that leaves me in a very peculiar situation. This is something I'm gonna have to take care of myself. I don't think it's something I can't do. It's just something I didn't want to do or relatively can afford to do. We'll make that work somehow. It's really, really frustrating. And you know, I've been posting all of this through the uh, groups and stuff sharing this thing and at this point I had to completely withdraw myself from uh, those conversations on the internet uh, because I was being attacked. I was being blamed for this, like this is my fault. Like putting these parts on that have been on the car for many thousands of miles have just all of a sudden worked together to destroy this, this engine all at once. Just on one particular day at one particular time, it's, it was the cause of these parts, which is my fault because I put them on. You know how stupid that sounds? Really, it's, it's not, these parts did not cause this failure. You know, I'm, be, I'm being blamed for this. Like, there's no other possibility of something going wrong with the car. Uh, you know, like, the problem is mine. Like, I modified it, I didn't tune it, and it blew up. And if I would have tuned it and it blew up, it still would have been my fault. And if I didn't modify it and it blew up, it would have been my fault. Because for some reason, that's how ridiculous people are. And a really frustrating part of all of it is, one of the people who has gotten on my back about me trying to point the blame in some other direction than myself, and who is basically saying it's my fault, and a person who works with these cars, and has a business of working with these cars, and a person who sells this part here, this part here, as upgrades over faulty Ford parts that are known to cause issues that are similar to my failure, that person seems to disregard his own advice. That person doesn't seem to believe that this is a cause of failure even though he sells it himself. And that's really disappointing. That really is. It's very interesting seeing the character of some people come out in situations you don't expect to see it. Uh, and well, so be it. I'm not naming names. I'm being respectful in that manner. If you know, you know, and I'll leave it at that. I can't be the internet's punch a bag. I'm not letting it happen to myself. I got way more respect for myself than letting other people do that to me. People that I don't even know. So if you want to talk to me about the situation or if you have questions about any of this or just want to talk to me in general, you can always send a message on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, interact with any of my videos. They'll, they'll all be there. I'm no longer doing things as part of community when it comes to this, because like I said, I'm no longer accepting people's bullcrap uh, without any type of reasonable response, which is only a handful of the people who were chime in on, on this. You know, it's fine, you can disagree, but please be respectful about it. Don't be a complete ass. It's not necessary. We're all adults. At least we try to be. Some of us seem to act like high school kids again, but whatever. I am not really sure what's ca what caused the failure, but I have a very good hunch. Just from the known facts about this car. And that is this thing right here, the low pressure fuel sensor. That's a factory Ford part. And I would very much 
want to say that's what caused the issue. Those parts are known to be problematic. Those parts, when failed, have caused similar issues. But in my case, it's, it's this part, that part, whatever part, and this. This is the problem. Now, see, the problem is people trust in the fact that Ford can do no wrong. If Ford is a manufacturer who outsources so much to other companies that make parts and things for these cars, there can be problems with those parts. That's why warranties exist, because when you mass produce something, there is a probability of something's not right. That's with any consumer product. That's why they exist. Ford is only using these parts as a scapegoat. Even if they could determine it was uh, that fuel sensor or something, a faulty piston or whatever the case may be, uh, they would still blame the parts because they just exist. This just gives them a way to screw the customer over whether the customer is right or wrong. And you would venture to say, well, the customer is wrong because the customer modified the car, except that's just not true. The customer has the right to modify their car. That's why the Magnuson Moss warranty law exists. If the part that was put on the car has caused a forward part to fail, then yes. But that has to actually be proven that certain parts were the cause of failure. And you can't just prove something by saying so. Uh, in this particular situation, I wouldn't even know how you would prove it. So that part I'm unsure about. But that's how the law is. Once again, Magnus Moss Warranty Act. Look it up. Educate yourself. It's recommended. I had to withdraw myself from the, you know, HPP group for this. So if you're someone who follows me on there and here, that's why I'm not there anymore. I, you know, was posting this as like, uh, hey, this is very unusual. Um, you know, you people who own this car may be interested in learning why this has happened. And the end result is pretty much a warning to all Ford owners that if you change this cover right here, they can void your entire warranty and fight you tooth and nail to the point of breaking you down and not fixing your car. And in my particular situation, voiding all future warranty repairs, no matter what it is. So to me, that is definitely a warning to all Ford owners because uh, if you take your vehicle in and this happens, they can do the same thing for you. I don't know if this is something new in terms of that that part of it. I do know, however, uh, from my talking to the dealership that they have changed their warranty claims process in the last few months to the point now where they are they, that require very stringent testing and diagnostics from the dealership in order to approve and facilitate a warranty repair. I still don't see any signs of any thorough diagnostics other than using a bore scope and checking cylinder two, this one right here. This is the one with the problem. They were supposed to pull this off in the oil pan to check all the parts for any excessive wear, which they never did. Um, and they were supposed to check the oil filter and cut open the oil filter. Oh, which, let's see. Uh, they, which they never did, because there it is, still there. To inspect, uh, you know, for any debris or any indication of lack of maintenance. Well, that whole possibility was thrown out of the table. They never actually performed those tests. So basically, the parts were the fault. Okay, fine, we'll look into it more. We'll check and see if any excessive wear and look for any other maybe potentially faulty parts from Ford requires the removal of other components to see internal parts. That never happened. Well, we can't see then. It's gotta be the aftermarket parts. What? At this point, I don't know who's really to blame the dealership, Ford, me, the parts. I don't even know. The dealership seemed to have gone through a great deal of trouble, a lot more than I thought they would have. Uh, in terms of trying to provide Ford with enough information th to prove that it was not these parts, uh, I'll explain that here in a minute because I have a whole breakdown of the conversation between Ford and the uh, service manager, but they have gone through a lot. So unless they're just feeding me a bunch of bull crap, which they could, uh, I mean, you know, they're all salespeople in the end. I don't know. All I do know is that maybe, maybe there is some legal matter in this that I could take up, but ultimately that's my responsibility now. And to clarify the damage, uh, they found that 
Cylinder two is slightly melted and cracked around where it connects to the rod. So it, it broke completely in half. It's also possible that a crack had formed around one of the bearings perhaps, and then it just slowly made its way up and went all the way across. At that particular time, I got on it and it completely split. Um, so from my understanding, the piston is just kind of laying in half in that cylinder. Uh, let's see, the oil still looks good. Like I checked the oil. I can't even keep this thing still. The oil still looks really clean. And it should be because it only has a couple thousand miles on this oil change. <sighs> but this is where I got a little concerned. I cracked open the catch can because I haven't actually looked at any of this until now, until after getting the car back. I don't know, can, I don't even know if it's, you can even see, oh, you can see there. Yeah, there's some shiny, chunky bits in there and that's not good um, because that means uh, metal bits have circulated through some of the oiling. Now maybe, possibly, that it's all kept to the bottom end and because of the catch cans here, maybe it trapped all those little bits from making its way into the cylinder head and chewing up the valves. Because if I can save this cylinder head, that's gonna be huge. And honestly, that's the only thing on this engine I really care about is the cylinder head and turbo. Um, the block is, as far as the metal it's made out of, I doubt there's really any big difference between it and any other 2.3 EcoBoost. Now that we got that part of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the printout I have of the conversation between the Ford warranty department and the service advisor. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. So pretty much right here is a copy of the conversation between the service manager and the Ford warranty rep, whatever. And I'll post pictures as I read this because it's kind of hard to pick up on the camera, but. So you can see here it says, uh, customer has engine knock. If applicable, please list any prior repair attempts, drivability, transmission related. Uh, they couldn't, so that's why it says NA. Please provide the diagnostic steps that were performed to determine the assembly needed to be replaced. Please list the pinpoint test complete and include test results, pressure readings, electrical measurements. Well, I'm not sure what they've done there because they couldn't test any pressure like doing a compression test or anything because that was not gonna work. Then it says inspect vehicle, found piston with hole melted, cracked across top of piston, has detached from rod, has aftermarket boost controller, wastegate actuator has been changed. Uh, I'm not sure what the aftermarket boost controller is unless they are citing the boost max as such, um, but that's not what it is, but I guess that's what they are referring to. Uh, let's see, list major components by name, not part number needed for repair, long block and turbo. Here's an important part. Uh, read the wording carefully. Please list part by name, not part number. That was root cause of failure, aftermarket components. Okay, well aftermarket components means more than one. Uh, it says please list part that was root cause of failure. They're still roping all the parts as a sum, not one particular part. That rubs me in multiple ways that's not correct. Okay, so uh, moving on, are there indications of vehicle or component abuse, modifications, lack of maintenance? And if any of those are checked, then it says, if so, please continue to warranty cancellation. Okay, you can't cancel warranty due to modifications. That's not how that works. Just the fact that modifications are present doesn't mean they can just, hey, yeah, screw your warranty. But that's what they say right here in clear writing, even though the federal law states otherwise. Here is the kicker. This is the part that sent me completely over the edge in terms of just wow factor on how bad I'm getting screwed. So if you look at the bottom here, it says, hello, James. By the way, James is the service manager. Uh, this is a message he received from the uh, Ford warranty rep. We understand that the engine is knocking and there's a hole in the piston due to aftermarket performance modifications. Since it has been determined that the damage to the engine is a result of the modifications, the customer should be provided with an estimate for engine repair replacement. If the customer agrees to pay for repairs, continue to repair or replace the engine. If the customer declines to pay for replacement, please fill out a warranty cancellation request form. And that is exactly what it is that denies all future warranty claims, no matter if it's engine, transmission, anything related. Simply because I opted to have the repair 
is done through some other means than the dealership, which is also in violation of the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. But hey, you know, two for two here, Ford, but I'm the one still wrong. Okay, well, so yeah, this is, this is just unbelievable, guys. I really cannot believe what this has come to. Um, not only am I just so upset on how Ford has handled this, I'm so upset on how I have been treated in the communities over this issue. So be it, I guess, whatever. They're not paying my bills. You know, most of the people there have no value to me. So it is what it is. But this is definitely something people should be worried about. You know, I have a hunch that this type of situation is going to end up being a lot more common than I would like to believe it. Uh, so what do I mean by that? I'm pretty sure Ford has restructured their <laughs> warranty system. Uh, there's articles, I've covered a couple of these, there's articles out there, you know, telling you about this, that they're working on doing so to cut corners and save money on warranty repairs. Well, I would figure that they would have done this with making sure that the parts they're producing over a high enough quality not to cause a problem where a customer needs to initiate a warranty repair. But it seems what they are doing, at least from this part of it, where I can actually perceive it, is that they are going to do everything they can to mitigate paying any future warranty repairs. And in my case, not replacing my engine under warranty to performance parts. And you know what? Fine. If that be the case, but then to blacklist my car from any future warranty repairs, even if it's not related to the engine, if it's the transmission, rear differential, to, to do that, to get out of warranty repairs, now that's just shady. I'm sorry, I mean, I'm pretty sure that that goes against consumer protection laws. But to do that to save a couple bucks just shows me that how shady these car companies are, and especially shows me what Ford really thinks of its consumers. It doesn't. The only thing Ford cares about is that, you know, they sell their cars. After that point, they probably wouldn't care if you died and rolled over and whatever else, and even if the car rolled over on top of you. They don't care. And, you know, to me, considering the world we live in, to have that kind of mentality as a consumer, why should I care if you don't care about me? If you don't want to care about your consumer, why should your consumer care about you? I mean, that's true with a lot of companies as of recently, but we can add forward to that, at least with this experience. I don't know. Maybe other people have been hit like this before. I know I've been reading some very, very <laughs> upsetting, you know, stories of other people's uh, issues with Ford's warranty department under their factory warranty. And that's going as far as back as 10 years plus. So I guess this is nothing new. The, perhaps it's just going to even get worse with how things are because how this went just is a good indication of how things are probably going to go for future warranty claims, especially with vehicles with the slightest thing done to them. So keep that in mind. So this is the final updates on Buster and the whole situation here. And, you know, going forward, we're going to get our hands a little dirty. I think we can do it. I'm, uh, I'm ready and prepared mentally, not financially, mentally. Uh, the financial part has to come from you, you know, watching the videos and sharing it around and following these teardown videos because uh, they're gonna help a little bit. Not a lot, but and a little bit will help. You gotta remember, I'm also making a car payment on this. Not having a car has also uh, caused me to lose money not being able to, you know, drive and work like I normally would be able to. So there's a lot of money that this is gonna cost me. And I can really use your support. And it's as easy as clicking on the videos, watching them through, giving it a thumbs up, commenting, and sharing. Like literally the simplest things you can do. I'm not asking for your money. I'm not asking for donations. I'm just asking for your support. And I think that is a very reasonable combination. Uh, so we can get Buster back on the road. I'm not sure if it's gonna be better than it was, but at least it'll be running for now. Uh, maybe a better version will be coming in the future. It all depends on what I find during teardown. But I think that's gonna wrap it up here for the updates and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Like it, share it, subscribe if you haven't already. Give a look out for next Cars Creative video.